Artus, it's fascinating tracking the history of Riga Airport. In 2004, this airport was servicing uh, something approaching 1.1 million passengers. And frankly, at that time, it was a very, very tired airport. Uh, right now, 13 years later, um, the position is like day and night. There's been a wholesale transformation here. What were the key drivers? Yeah, you are absolutely right. Uh, in 2004, uh, when we joined the European Union, the airport was uh, 40 years old. So it was quite a tired airport uh, built in Soviet times. So what we had to do is we had to accommodate to the new circumstances that we are now the part of EU, we are the part of open skies. There is more capability for people to travel to Latvia and for Latvians to travel abroad. So what happened, uh, a lot of new carriers came in, the low-cost carriers Ryanair and EasyJet. They forced our national carrier, Air Baltic, to lower their charges. They were previously feeding the other hubs, such as SAS, Copenhagen, so they completely changed their strategy to become a hub carrier of the Riga airport. So this helped them to increase the network, to increase the share of transfer passengers, and uh, to become eventually the hub of the Baltic states. Last year, the passenger count was 5.4 million passengers. That's 12% up on 2015. Um, how are you doing so far this year? Yes, uh, the last year was a record year for us in terms of passenger numbers. And this year, uh, we are going to break the record once, once again. So, so far, January till August, the annual passenger growth is 10.9% uh, comparing to the last year. So the growth is continuing, and this is thanks to many factors. So first of all, it's a strong growth of our national carrier. Air Baltic has just received seven new aircrafts, the Bombardier CS-300, and Air Baltic is its, the first operator of this new type of the aircrafts. So they still have other aircrafts, the older aircrafts in their fleet, so instead of selling them out, they are trying to accommodate the extra capacity. And to do this, they are opening and trying and testing the new routes. So this year, they have opened more than 12 routes so far. And they have already announced that the next year, they are launching at least five new routes, connecting the Scandinavia to CIS countries and connecting the west to the east. And in just two weeks, we are launching the longest flight for Air Baltic from Riga to Abu Dhabi. So this will not only increase the overall passenger flow. You're widening the hub. Yes, we are widening the hub and there will be a, a lot of uh, commercially important passengers coming to our airport. What are you projecting for the next five years? And let's go, let's go forward, let's go to 10 years. Yeah. What, do you, what do you think the numbers are going to be then? Well, we are thinking quite positively that uh, the passenger numbers should increase uh, of at least uh, the same rate as uh, industry average you were just talking about. There are many factors affecting that's this. That's a fairly conservative estimate. <laughs> yeah, that's a conservative estimate. However, um, we are quite hopeful that the people who live in our catchment area, which is eventually increasing, and one of the factors why it's increasing is that we are launching a new high-speed train link that will connect uh, Estonia with Latvia and further with uh, Lithuania and even uh, the, all the Finland? way to Berlin, yeah, all the way to Berlin and maybe one day to, with Helsinki. Mm -hmm. So eventually the airport who has a widest route network will win. So we see that uh, this will increase our catchment area, so it means that more passengers will be able to use our airport. The economy of Latvia is growing. We see that the salaries are growing, so people can afford much more to travel as well as there are many new foreign investors, such as our big partners, TAV, uh, airports holding uh, auto duty free. Uh, they are coming in our country. So, and uh, we can see that Riga is a top choice for many uh, global uh, companies to open their headquarters here. As I said, um, it, your estimate looks conservative uh, at 5%. I mean, if you look at the Helsinki model, for example, I mean, yeah. they've achieved a lot of success with the uh, Chinese airlines uh, hubbing through them. You really got to bring one Chinese carrier <laughs> in to yeah. dramatically increase your yeah. projected yeah. percentage. Absolutely. You are absolutely right. Uh, what we have done so far is that um, our network 
of routes are quite wide uh, within the region, within the Scandinavia, within the Europe, also to CIS countries, as I mentioned. However, we are looking much further. We are looking towards Asia, towards the United States. We really need to attract the new long-haul carriers. And to do that, there are many factors that we have to take into consideration, very important ones. And one of them is uh, the, the very well-developed infrastructure. And for the last five years, we have spent more than 150 million euros, us and our partners, here in Riga Airport to improve this infrastructure. So we are now sitting in a brand new business lounge. We have doubled the capacity of the business lounge. So this is one of the important factors for business travelers, as you know. Where else has the money been spent? I mean, <laughs> not all that money was yours. Some of the money not came all from of this was used on the some, business lounge. <laughs> <laughs> but but some, a lot of it came from the EU, of course, as well. Yes, yes. Um, so what else has been built? I mean, because you've got PSC. Yes. Uh, first of all, we have increased the capacity of the apron. So we have uh, almost doubled the parking stands for the aircrafts to accommodate, first of all, the needs of Air Baltic and also to attract the new uh, hub carriers to base their aircrafts here, such as Wizz Air, that is basing the aircrafts in Riga Airport. Addi additionally, together with our partners, there was a new uh, fuel uh, logistics center built on site in Riga Airport. Uh, the capacity of the fuel tanks is uh, 6,000 uh, cubic meters. So it means that in case there is a shortage of the fuel deliveries to Riga Airport, we have enough capacity to maintain the operations of the airport for at least uh, one week. Uh, additionally to that, uh, together with the renovation and expansion of the apron, there was a fuel hydrant system built. I can't get excited about fuel hydrants. <laughs> <laughs> So what it means for the airlines, it means that um, basically they can fuel their uh, aircrafts much faster, yeah. especially the uh, wide-body aircrafts. Well, efficiency is key here because, I mean, you've, you've achieved a number of uh, awards in the last few years um, which are entirely down to the efficiency of how well managed this airport Ab is. Absolutely. Our minimum connection time, despite of building the new pier building is still we are maintaining it at 25 minutes so within the 25 minutes we have to bring passenger from one gate to another gate and also to bring the passenger baggage from one gate uh, from one aircraft to another aircraft as i mentioned uh, about the fuel system it's if we want to attract the long haul carriers and they are flying with a wide body aircrafts if we need to fuel them with uh, trucks it will take 2 hours approximately to do that if you are using the fuel hydrant system with a speed of fueling up to three tons per minute, it means that we can eventually fuel the 747 uh, within uh, 40 minutes. So this is uh, very important for airlines because they are earning money eventually when the aircrafts are flying when, and not when they are on the ground. And this can speed up the turnaround time of the, of the airlines. One final thing in terms of the, the, what you built here is that the, and we'll get into specifics on the PSC shortly, is the VIP terminal. Um, yes. And that's actually very yes. impressive. Yes. We have uh, very strong connections to the cities uh, where the business uh, is very well developed, such as Moscow, because we are just one hour uh, flight away from, uh, from Moscow. There is a lot of flights going to London. So... There's a lot of top businessmen, commercially important people that are using our facilities and our airport. So this is why, uh, and this number is growing. So this is why we were, there was a necessity to increase the capacity of the VIP terminal. Also, we were preparing um, for the EU presidency of 2015. Uh, we needed to have more capacity also to service the uh, government officials. So these two factors, the increase in commercially important passengers and increase uh, in uh, state delegations that were using our airport made us, uh, uh, made us to, to expand our VIP terminal. Okay, let's get into the most obvious, most dramatic um, event of the airport, which of course is the uh, brand new PSC. 
just take us through the breakdown um, mm -hmm. of it in terms of how much additional space it's delivered to you, um, the commercial footprint? Well, the overall footprint of uh, the, the airport was increased uh, by uh, more than 20%. So the, the biggest increase was airside. So now the, cap the airside capacity uh, is 8.5 million passengers per year. Uh, we have doubled the number of gates that, we, that we've had in our airport. Additionally, we were able to increase the commercial footprint by uh, 30%. Previously, due to the lack of space, we were mainly concentrating on the general duty-free products, on some local souvenirs and fashion store. Now, with the extra space, we can be more flexible. We can add much more new brands. We can widen our offer. So currently there is already a new spa facility open, many new uh, local shops. We are opening uh, local uh, F&Bs, local cafes and restaurants. Also a new uh, walkthrough shop for the duty free with uh, a big emphasis on uh, uh, products for the children, on the toys. And uh, our passengers are evaluating this because we are closely monitoring the service quality. This is also important, not only for passengers, but also for airlines. If they need to choose where to fly to, they, need to, they are giving the priority to those airports that are doing excellent job in terms of uh, service quality. So we are measuring the service quality every year. So last year, we got the fourth place within our group of airports, according to ACI, Airport Service Quality Survey. So to be number four within the airport uh, group, five to 10 million passengers is a big achievement for us. We are hoping to achieve even more with, uh, in the upcoming years with all the investment that we have done on the airside part and within the terminal. Ahmed, can we just kick off this interview by you letting the audience know the rather unique arrangement that exists at Riga Airport with the stakeholders involved? Sure. TAV won the tender to be the master concessionaire for the commercial areas. And under the TAV umbrella, we have ATU operating the duty-free areas. We have BTA operating the food and beverage. And top commercial services operating other commercial areas such as the pharmacy, the uh, currency exchange. You've been here for six years now, uh, and this airport has changed dramatically uh, in uh, that short period of time. In fact, you know, how to believe in change. And you've actually grown as a business uh, together with uh, the airport um, uh, company. In that time, you've also completely redesigned the stores here twice, in, in fact, in the last four years. Um, how have you performed as a business? The performance has been, has, has been great. Um, when we came here in 2011, the airport was in a, well, Latvia was in a recession. Uh, we were actually concerned. But looking back, uh, we were at the right place at the right time. So the growth of Air Baltic, the growth of the uh, Riga Airport has been very fortunate for us. Uh, the growth has been around 96% in sales and 64% in passenger growth, per passenger growth. Looking specifically at Duty Free, uh, I understand it represents something approaching 50% of total non-aeronautical revenues. I mean, yet the category split here is very different from what we see in other locations. Just take us through uh, the percentages. Sure, uh, when we look at LTC, it's about 65%. The uh, perfume and cosmetics is around 30%, and the fashion accessories is around 5%. But in addition to that, we have the subcontractors, and the subcontractors account for about 10% of total sales. Fragrance cosmetics are still quite low. Um, are you planning to do anything about trying to increase the appreciation of that particular category? I think our assortment and range is changing continuously, especially due to the transfer passengers here. It's become about, the transfer passengers around 30% at the airport now. 
And because of this change, we've uh, also rearranged our uh, perfume and cosmetic offer, uh, offering much higher end personalized uh, perfume and cosmetic products. You've invested over three million euros in the last eight months alone. Um, most of the activity, of course, has been in Sepia. Um, just take us through um, your new adventure here. Sure, we've added about five stores as duty-free, uh, including the Seep here. This is the most recent one, the Toys and Best Seller store. The reason we added this was um, it's in a very centralized location. It's connecting the three areas together. And the Toys was highly demanded by the changing passenger profile. But in addition to that, we're going to have about uh, seven new uh, food and beverage outlets plus a lot of local uh, concepts such as uh, Grenardi or uh, Gretier, uh, health and wellness products, uh, fashion accessory products. Arguably, you could, could argue that perhaps, uh, given the passenger count here, that, that there, there might be an excess of retail, but it's clearly being welcomed because people are spending money here. And the toy section in the particular store is doing very well. And it's an interesting combination, this is. As you can see, it's right in the, you know, she said it's right in the middle of the walkthrough uh, area uh, between Central um, and A, 2B, and C. Uh, and yet they've got an, an interesting combination of the discount area, you've got some global fragrance brands, you've got the best of Latvia um, and toys. Uh, it's a good mix and doing very well. It is a good mix. Uh, I think the local area was an addition as well. Even though we have other local stores, uh, as subcontractors, we also wanted it to include it in the duty-free offer. Within PSC itself, it's uh, not an easy thing uh, managing the split between Schengen and non-Schengen. Uh, the beauty about that peer, as indeed uh, peer B before it, was the fact that there was a very inclusive collaboration between all the, all the parties involved. Um, the airport, TAV, yourself, uh, and BTA. Um, it clearly worked. Yes, it's very difficult to manage Schengen and non-Schengen flights uh, together uh, because there's the operation side and there's the retail side and it's sometimes a conflict. But over here, Rix was very open. Uh, they listened to our suggestions and we were able to manage the, uh, the passenger flow according to the changing demands. So you consider your partnership with Rix to be uh, really quite a special one? Yes, I think we have a great chemistry together. Uh, when we have any project, we sit down together, we tackle all the problems together, uh, TAV, ATU, BTA, and RICS. Uh, and apart from the business side, we also have fun outside, eating together, you know, playing sports together. So this really reflects on the, uh, the business overall. So it's a unique model, but you don't actually do any airport that you operate in with a cookie cutter approach. You change the model and change the retail offer according to the profile. Sure, every profile, every airport is different. When you look at our operations in Medina, it's more of a religious uh, airport. When we look at uh, Bodrum, it's a touristic airport. So Riga is now a commercial airport. It's, a, it's got a commercial CIPs, let's say. Uh, it's a transfer hub, it's in, it's in the EU, so every airport has to be different. One final question, uh, Ahmed. What do you think defines Atu's DNA here? I think the employees recognize the changes that are going on. Uh, we welcome that. They're in tune with our vision, and we look forward to all the opportunities. Oh, thank you for your time. Thank you. We've heard at length um, about the investment uh, to date. What about future development of the airport? As I mentioned, we have done so much airside. But our bottlenecks, uh, according to our calculations and our benchmarks, uh, the bottlenecks are land side. So as I mentioned, uh, there are many new flights coming in. Uh, the, the demand is increasing. So this puts a, quite a big pressure on our check-in facilities, on our security control facilities and on those on, on that infrastructure which is not visible to passengers which is a baggage handling system so already this year the management board of Riga airport has approved the plan for the next five years to expand the land side part of the terminal and this expansion will double 
almost double the size of the airport uh, by adding uh, additional 30,000 square meters to existing capacity. Uh, there will be two new islands of the check-ins. There will be a big processor for security control. And there will be a state-of-the-art new uh, baggage handling system. So in addition to that, we are planning to build the multi-level uh, parking because eventually the land side expansion will take the space which is now used for the short-term parking on the ground. So we'll need to go up, not to waste too much land, which is a prime location next to the terminal. So we'll build the multi-level parking. And there is a big project which I briefly mentioned, uh, the rail which, is a, which is a rail yeah. terminal. There will be a high-speed train link connecting also the city of Riga the central sta uh, train station to the Riga uh, airport train station. And this all has to be built by 2022. In addition to that, we will... That's quite ambitious. Th this is ambitious. In addition to that, we have just learned that the Latvian air traffic control, they are also planning to build their new traffic tower. Yeah, this, these are quite ambitious plans. So the next five years will be very hard for, uh, for us in terms of managing all the operations. It will be a challenge also for our partners to adapt to the new realities. However, the past shows that we have done an excellent job before in terms of maintaining the flawless passenger experience and the flawless operations of Riga Airport while doing the heavy construction works. So I'm sure that together with our partners will do an excellent job. Well, the partnership seems to be going from strength to strength, but um, you've covered the next four or five years, uh, but your budget and your planning goes, goes well beyond that. You're actually planning towards 2030, and there are even wider, broader developments going to take place at the airport. Yes, absolutely. Around the airport, I should say. Absolutely. Uh, we are developing the business park project. It has already started in 2006 with many new logistics centers and cargo warehouses being built on the airport side. Because it's not only the passengers uh, who are bringing the money to the airport, it's also the cargo business. And our excellent geographical location uh, being in the middle between the east and the west uh, provides us with a great opportunity to improve the cargo flow and we are working uh, very intensively with uh, our um, friends and colleagues in Asian countries uh, to show them that uh, our airport is capable to, uh, to handle high cargo flows and we have seen already a success because there are weekly flights from China flying uh, to Riga and then the cargo is distributed further both to the west and also to the east. Some of the flow goes to Russia. So we see now that uh, the cargo is pretty much supporting uh, the passenger uh, flights. Well, it just one feeds the other. One feeds that. Yeah, and together with our growth, uh, as I mentioned, the business park is increasing as well. We are hoping to uh, increase the number of hotels being on the airport side. This is also important for transfer passengers. As we know, the models of the other airports include the free accommodations for the passengers who are waiting for their long haul flights, which might be in the next morning, so they have to stay somewhere. So this could be again a good synergy between the business park operators and the hotel operators and our hub carrier. So Riga Airport City, here we come. Riga uh, Airport <laughs> City is developing already and uh, yeah. So finally Artos, if there was a, a single sentence that you thought best defined Riga's DNA, what would it be? Uh, definitely that's uh, our position in the middle of the Baltics, 
right in the middle of the Europe, in Scandinavia, in the heart of Europe, I would say. Also, that's our infrastructure, the capacity, the reliability of our infrastructure. And lastly, but not least, uh, this is our excellence in service, which is really important for everyone. Artos, thank you for your time, and congratulations you. on your recent elevation to uh, becoming a member of the board here. Thank you, Peter. Thanks.